It's time for corporate venturing. Kurt Kaltenegger, he's actually the resident chief technology officer of ABB Technology Ventures. Okay, the thank you. Is yours. <laughs> thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everybody. So I have the pleasure to tell you something about the art of corporate venturing. So I will tell you something what we are doing, how we are doing, but I will tell you something as well how we should do. As Jan said in the morning today, uh, tell what you want to tell. So I want to tell you that something is going wrong. Something is going wrong in the capital venturing. And I will come to that point in the second half of my presentation, and I will call it then the, art, the sustainable art of corporate venturing, because we have to do something different. But bef before we come to that, uh, I will tell you something about ABP, about ABP Technology Venture. And uh, by the way, the picture what you see in the back here, that's uh, one device of our uh, portfolio companies of Aquamarine. It's a, a, a device which can produce energy around 800 kilowatt. And I have uh, chosen that picture that you get an idea about uh, devices in the clean tech area where you have in the renewable sector devices which are quite big. And big devices means they're expensive as well. A prototype of such a device is about 10 million uh, pounds what you have to spend for just a prototype. Just that you get an idea. That's a 25 meters times 25 meters device. Okay, but uh, let me start about ABP. So what's ABP? Not everybody knows ABP because we have not consumer goods. We are in the power sector. We have uh, products for power and automation. So we have two legs. And these two things, power and automation, are growing together more and more, of course. Smart grid is a very logic uh, consequence of that. And uh, what we have is uh, products from the generation, and therefore, of course, we are interested in renewables, from the generation to the end user. And end user means for us even home automation or industrial automation, automation products for, uh, for complete industry sectors even. We have robots. Um, maybe you have seen this uh, orange-colored robot from ABP as well. And so it's automation and power what we have, that you get an idea about the size of our company. We are making about 40 billion US dollar revenues per year. We have around 130,000 employees globally. So we are in more than 150 countries worldwide. So we are a real global company. And I will not go to much more details here. I will tell you more about what we are doing in AVP technology ventures. We are a very young uh, team, means we are si operating since two and a half years now. In these two and a half years, we have done now 10 deals. The 11th will come very soon, in one week from now, I expect it even. And um, what we are doing is we invest in early stage companies. Early stage for us means that it's not seed state because that's too, too extensive to, to, to put too much uh, effort on that. And it's not pre-IPO. That's uh, where we cannot maybe add too much value. So we are looking more around A, B, C. That's where we uh, try to invest. And where we are interested is uh, in technologies. So we are investing in potential game-changing technology. So if you have the feeling, yeah, that could be a game-changer in future, that could be something very, very uh, interesting, which, where you can do differently than today, where you really have it differentiated to others, that's where we are interested in. But of course, uh, I tell you that, that you don't send me just PowerPoints and say, I have a good idea. So no, we want to see proof of concept. So that's where we uh, go in and say, OK, with our expertise, with our 7,000 engineers in AVP, we can judge that this is a good idea, that this has a potential, and we have the feeling as well we can bring in some value. And that's what, something very specific what we are doing. We bring in some value. What you can see on the pictures here, we are just four people in our team. We are globally even in our team. So two of our guys are sitting in the US. I'm with my boss sitting in, in Zurich, at the headquarters of AVP. Even there we are distributed. And uh, it sounds like yeah, a very, very small team, but um, we have access, of course, to all our people in AVP. And uh, I have access to all 7,000 uh, R&D engineers. So from that point, whenever we are doing a deal, I can find an expert inside AVP. I can find even business development people 
who knows the market, who has an idea how the market will grow, how the market will develop, and we find experts on the R&D side as well. And that's a very important point as well, what we are doing. We go in in a deal only if we know that we will bring in more than just money. Because uh, other venture capitals norm normally anyhow in, so it makes no sense just to come in for, for the money side. So we are a strategic investor, and uh, we want to add some value on top of that. So what we are doing is we invest in uh, 1 million to 25 million, so in, in the complete range, so it doesn't matter if it's a smaller or bigger one, approximately 10 million per deal. We are doing four to six deals about per year. We are completely uh, geographic agnostic. So we have done deals in the US, in Europe, in Israel. We are really looking, uh, and, and even in China, so we are really doing it uh, on a very global base. But what is very, very important as well is we are not doing it just because it's strategic. We are doing deals as a precondition. The deals have to fulfill what other venture capitals are looking as well. So we have to expect a return out of that. We are doing it from a financial point of, of course as well. So there are really two dimensions. It's the strategic one and the financial one. And what's important as well is from an early stage on, we get our business people involved, what you have here on the last point as well. We really need a link to our business people. That's a very, very important point there. And that you get an idea of where we are interested, of course, in. Is it what we are exactly doing today in ADP? No. It's not what we are doing today exactly. It's where we could grow in future. So where we uh, have areas where we are not in today, where we have some expertise, but we think, OK, that could be something very, very important for ABP in the future where we can grow. And uh, as for many uh, big companies, it's typically that the business development people or R&D people are more thinking, doing the same, uh, just more from what we are doing today. And what we are doing in our team is we are looking beyond. Where could we grow in future? Can we add maybe even a business unit or a division in future and a complete new topic? And uh, that's where we are uh, searching, and that's in the renewable sector, and you have it here in the box where we are looking for. Renewables for us means, of course, wave and tidal, means uh, solar, uh, means uh, as well geothermal and, and such things. And uh, smart grid is a very big topic for us as well. That starts even with making the grid more intelligent, but as well it, it's for... Um, Energy storage, it's electric vehicles to the grid, and my colleague uh, today will tell you more about that topic. And uh, we are looking as well, waste to energy, water, that are the topics where we are interested in. But now let me come to what I told you before. I'm not happy how the situation is today. If you look what was the uh, role of, of uh, traditional uh, venture capitals, it was to finance and build companies. That's fine, yes, but what happened in the 1980s and 1990s is even that the, those uh, was in the, in the dot-com business, in the, in the software business development, and that happens that from the concept, from, a, from an idea, to making revenues, to making an exit, it was very, very fast. A small amount to invest and very huge returns. And based on that, the expectations were, was completely different as well. So failing with, with three companies in your portfolio out of ten, is no issue at all, and even if you just make with one third of your portfolio companies these huge returns you had made a very, very good business. And out of that, of course, it was that the expectations are rising and rising higher and higher. Yeah, 100 times uh, return is, is uh, provocative, yes, of course, but that's what uh, is now in the expectations of, of VCs. And um, it's not good because uh, those technologies which would be good are starving of that. They don't get the attention because uh, if you say, oh, out of that, maybe it's just three times, four times revenue, oh, why, why shall I go in? And that's exactly the problem what we have. So, and what we have seen as well is the pre money valuation is going up uh, to, to dimensions where we say, no. A very nice technology we would have high interest to invest in it, but valuation is completely wrong. And can we go always in and, and say, okay, let us do it down round? No, I think that's not the right, right way to do it. So we need something to do different. And we need a different approach, and especially in clean tech. And uh, yesterday, we had an interesting um, discussion with Bart. 
he said, there is an urban move. Yes, there is, and I discussed in the evening with him as well. But if you look to some clean tech areas, wave and tidal, or if you look to solar, there's a lot of money needed to bring it to a certain bankability. So it's not that you have to develop a prototype or to get a product on the market, you, you need bankability. That's even one step more. If you look to Brightsaw, that was 150 million approximately what was needed to bring them to that point. And that's exactly the problem. So what can we do? How can we do different? So we need a sustainable cooperation. I, I think we need a symbiosis model. Corporate ventures and classic ventures have to work differently together. And of course, we have to manage as well the expectations from the LPs. Those are funding the VC firms. And they have to adjust the expectations. And uh, because what is different? Strategics like ABP or others in the value chain, which are very important in the value chain, bring in more than money, as I said before. And that's exactly what, what we are doing. We, we try to bring more than just money. And that means we bring in our technical expertise. We bring in uh, knowledge in the product development, which means as well that we, for example, tell the company how to design for manufacturing later. We connect them to our supply chain management, to our supply chain globally, to our, our uh, good suppliers, maybe in China or even in, in the US or wherever. And uh, we bring in market channels. We bring in market knowledge. And so it's a lot what we can do for those companies. And it's much, much more than just money what we bring in. And uh, as I said before as well, we in ATV, we in AVP Technology Ventures, we uh, link very early in the deal, even when we are investigating a deal, when we are making the due diligence, we bring in already business people, business development people, business uh, technology managers, because uh, they can bring the, the, the market knowledge as well and the, and the expertise. And what we are doing as well is we bring those people on the board of those companies. Uh, there are ex exceptions, of course, if there is a conflict in that, that we make something very, very similar, of course, then we don't do it. But normally, we, we try to bring business people directly onto the board. And that's, I think, uh, something where, where we are very young, so I, we have even not done exit, where, but I still think that's a success factor, what we are doing. We can see that our portfolio companies are doing very well. And one of these success factors is that our business people are in the board, are giving support to them. And now we have to do differently, as I said. We have to manage the terms differently, because if we bring in some value, a lot of value, and make the companies fast growing and getting fast them to a high value, yeah, and maybe later we want to acquire those companies, yeah, why shall we pay then much, much more for the company just for the value what we have brought in? So we have to manage this point as well. And therefore, I think we have to think about, I have not a solution here, but we have to think about that both, and therefore I called it a symbiosis, that both have a win-win situation. The classic venture, they must get their returns, of course, if certain milestones are reached. So they shall get their three to four times returns. That's absolutely fine, I think. But the corporate venture capitals have not to overpay what they brought in as a value. And this, what I just told you, is, I think, a starting point for discussion. And this is something what I want to trigger in, in a lot of conferences, that we think about how we could maybe do differently, that we don't only look for those technologies where we think, oh, we will get at this 100 times return, a little bit like in this software.com business. How can we do better in clean tech that really those technologies, those technologies which are really good but don't bring these high, high returns, have a chance as well, that we are faster in what we are doing then. Thank you very much. Do we have a question for Kurt from the audience? Okay. Up there. Leo. Hi. Hello, Alessio. Uh, Alessio. <laughs> uh, how do you manage conflict of interest? I'm up here. Uh, uh, between a company that you finance, uh, like, for example, Ecotality, and a mm -hmm. company that ABB acquire, like Apion. 
OK, yeah, that's exactly what I say, that we have exceptions where we try not to, do, to, to bring those business people exactly into the board where we have the same business, but that uh, exception. So there we will have our own people from our own team on the board. What we can do, of course, is as well that we bring in local people. For example, if the company is in the, in the US and we have local uh, people from the business side who are, have no conflict or conflict of interest in that side, that we can bring those managers in those who know the market situation, and what we do uh, as well in those situations, but that's a very, very rare situation where we have already a business and where we invest in exactly the same, or nearly the same business, that we have a, a clear cooperation agreement with those companies, where we have a clear term how we will operate on the different markets. But that's more the exception, I would say. Another question? I just have uh, one asking you yes. for your favorite startup in your portfolio and the reason why you invested. What is your favorite startup out of your portfolio? My favorite startup is a very small one. It's an Israel one, and it's, uh, it's uh, for measuring wind energy and uh, the, the wind speed. And I think that's a very good example because it was a very small one. Our business people said, oh, we are in wind business, but do we really have interest in that? We said, yes, let us try it, because that can influence our wind business, of course. We can get access to customers where we have no access today. Therefore, I like that uh, very much. OK, okay. thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great. <Yeah. laughs>